morning friends and welcome to the pre-market view. The US markets continue to show a lot of strength over the past many trading sessions and they were marginally up by about 0.5 to 0.6% uh, as we've seen that uh, the bond market rally uh, in US has come to an end. A large flow of money is moving into equities uh, and apart from that there is there is also a sense that once uh, uh, Mr. Trump is, is uh, becomes the president he is going to undertake a lot of uh, you know, infrastructure projects and a lot of changes in the policy which would actually boost the, the earnings growth for the US corporate sector. So which is why we are seeing strength in the US markets for past few trading sessions. European markets too were up anywhere from up anywhere from 0.25 to almost about 0.75%. Uh, and when we look at the Asian markets today morning, Nikkei is trading with the marginal losses of about 0.6 odd percent as yen has started appreciating against the dollar. Currently, it's quoting at about 111.6 odd level, uh, but most of the other Asian markets are uh, trading with a mild uptick. And SDX Nifty is suggesting that we are going to open down about 23, 24 odd points. Uh, on Friday, we had a good session for our markets, uh, mainly driven by the technology and pharma uh, sectors, uh, and and that also helped uh, to an extent because of the kind of weakness that we've seen in rupee. But today morning the sentiment is looking a bit subdued, particularly for the banking sector overall. On that note, let me invite our FNO expert to take you through important FNO cues and ideas that we can have from the derivative side. Good morning, friends. We'll give analysis on derivatives. In Friday's trading session, being the first trading session of the November of the December series, uh, we have started the, uh, we have the start series uh, showing significant amount of short covering bounce back. When FT uh, started the, uh, start, uh, open up with a gap of around 40, 50 odd points, and thereon we did show some kind of a positive momentum continue, and uh, due to which Nifty showed a spectacular gain of over uh, one percentage, that is 1.41 percentage, settling at 8126.10. Uh, it was uh, it, uh, the contribution was ac uh, was across the board uh, that uh, all, most of all these sectors contributed in the Friday's uh, upward momentum. But it was much of a short covering which was been seen as Nifty uh, uh, shattered its open interest of around 5 odd percentage uh, that is in the absolute term 7.45 lakh shares were shattered in the open interest while cost of carry also decreased significantly from 6.5 odd percentage to currently it's been trading at 1.5 odd percentage that is Nifty premium also came down drastically from around 40, uh, 40 odd points 40, 47 odd points to currently it's just been trading at around 12 odd points We'll consider majority of the unwinding which was seen in Friday's trade was due to short covering while put call ratio also increased by 3 basis point from 0 0.97 per, uh, from 0 0.97 to 1.00 So apart from the uh, nifty upward momentum we haven't seen any other parameters supporting it uh, despite uh, 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 even if uh, cost of carry has been also decreased despite market showing uh, over 800 odd point gain and also the put call ratio which uh, which uh, itself uh, shows it as an inverse relationship with the market if market increases a uh, put call ratio always falls but we did so and uh, unlike uh, unlike the last few trading sessions uh, we, we did so some kind of a uh, reverse kind of a uh, trading which would happen that put call ratio have increased by three basis point despite market going up so no no other parameters in the derivatives have supported into the market in this upward momentum in the friday's trade as uh, only the nifty future which shattered of around 5 odd percentage and as all parameters were being on the uh, on, on, on bit on the bearish side uh, while uh, volatility index also we do see once the market goes up we do see volatility index uh, decreases and that did happen we did so an decrease in the volatility index of around uh, sorry uh, we have seen an increase in the volatility index of around 3 odd percentage from 17.16 to 17.61 odd levels on the option side, we haven't seen much of the addition, uh, 8,100, 8,300 call options have seen an addition of around 15 and 8, 12 percentage respectively. And on the put side, uh, we have seen an addition in seven, from 7,800 to 8,000, all, all the strike price have seen an addition of around 15 to 23 odd percentage respectively. And now the highest put base and call base have been uh, determined. Uh, we have seen an 8,000 put option is the highest in terms of open interest with around 67 lakh shares into it, it's very huge open interest which got added in the 8000 put option 
as uh, the 8,500 uh, call option is the highest in terms of open interest. So there's very huge amount of open interest which has been seen in 8,000 put option which signifies that 8,000 is a very crucial support for the market and it's not been easy for the market to take out 8,000 levels since uh, seeing uh, such kind of a high open interest into it. A market will always try to bounce back above 8,000 even if market falls below it. So there is a crucial level of 8,000 which is uh, there for this series and we might see if 8,000 will hold on, we might see market showing some kind of a positive momentum in the coming trading session. Uh, there are no securities in the band period for today's trade. On the FIS terms, the net buys in Friday's trade in almost all of the segments. Index futures have went by 638 odd crews and the open interest of FIS did went up by around 3 odd percentage. Index options have went by 2422 odd crews. While stock futures also they went by 1034 odd crews which was also quite significant. And stock options net by 133 crews only. On the market level of five days VWAP stands at 8022 with a lower range of uh, our VWAP comes at our, uh, 8022 and high range at 8200. As six fifty is trading bit uh, on the lower side, it's down by twenty odd points and scoring anywhere around eight zero eight four, indicating some kind of a flattish to negative opening can be expected in the morning trade. That's it from derivatives. Thank you. Friends, uh, let me take you through share pre market action, starting with trading ideas. On Saturday evening, uh, RBI announced that banks will have to maintain hundred percent CRR on the deposits that they received between twenty sixth of September and uh, 11th of November uh, and uh, that means that uh, the entire deposit that they have got particularly post demonetization a large part of that will have to be provided for in terms of the additional CRR and banks will not earn any income on that uh, that is considered to be negative for the banks as almost about 3.3 lakh crore will be sucked out of the system and that would practically not yield any income which the market was actually factoring in that you know, on the incremental deposits, there is going to be, uh, you know, some kind of a spreads that the banks are going to earn, but that doesn't seem like uh, coming through. So that's a negative for the banks, and one can short uh, uh, State Bank with a stop loss of 266, target of 250 to 47. Uh, also short PNB with a stop loss of 143, target 135, 133, and short ICICI Bank also with a stop loss of 265, target 252 to 246. Aurobindo. Uh, Aero uh, Generic Qs, which is a French subsidiary of Aurobindo Pharma, is going to acquire select assets in France from Teva. Uh, the amount has been undisclosed, but that's considered to be a long term positive for Aurobindo Pharma. Strike Sashun enters into an agreement with uh, Mobile Pharma Sweden to acquire Pedia Care brand for total consideration of about 5 million plus. Uh, in a significant relief uh, for stock markets, brokers, banks, and mutual funds, the government has excluded the securities from the definition of uh, the words goods in the revised draft model for goods and services tax. That's a relief uh, for most of the financial services companies. CIPLA is in talks to sell animal health units. Sequent Scientific have submitted bids in CIPLA. White Cell, Rallygear Fort is holding firm in talks to refinance $300 uh, million of debt. Uh, in case of Rico India accounting fraud, the company has sacked two people and accepted CEO's resignation. Adani's Kamakal mine in Australia jumps another legal hurdle with the state Supreme Court dismissing a legal challenge to the validity of the Queensland government's decision to approve the project. So some relief uh, coming in for Adani there. And Bharti Airtel has acquired uh, about 4.2% stake held in the Econet Wireless in its Nigerian arm. Dilip Bilkon uh, receives letter of award for two projects. Tata Steel may invest about 125 million dollars uh, per annum in UK plans. Apollo Tires Logistics Arm plans about 100 million dollars of fund raising from PEs. Uh, Metalist Forging's uh, board, uh, board is going to meet to consider restructuring of the company as proposed by investors. The companies which will be announcing numbers today Fox and Kings, we are looking at a net profit of 121 crore. Oil India, we are looking at a net profit of about 580 crore. Here is a list of stocks with positive and negative bias. Stocks with positive bias are Ambulia Cement, Infosys and Sun Pharma. Stocks with negative bias are TVS Motors and DLF. And the advisory picks which would be uh, flashed on the ET now uh, around 9.30. Uh, Bharat Electronics, Chambal Fertilizer, Manpasan Beverage, InfoEdge and Vanrilla Holidays.
That's it from all of us friends. Have a good trading session and see you tomorrow at the same time.